Hello, and welcome to Electrical Troubleshooting. This is the second part in a series of Buick know-hows dealing with electricity in an automobile. This program focuses on how to use a digital multimeter, often called a DVOM. Additionally, this program explains some electrical diagnosis strategies for tracking down typical circuit problems. Since electricity cannot actually be seen in a wire, we use tools like this DVOM to sense electricity for us. High impedance digital multimeters like this unit are more sensitive and accurate than analog meters. Digital multimeter J34029A has a very high impedance or resistance to current flow, 20 mega ohms. That's 20 million ohms of resistance. Only meters with 10 mega ohms or greater impedance can be used to troubleshoot sensitive circuits. In order to produce a reading, some current from the circuit must flow through the meter. Sensitive DVOMs like this one use very little current and yet deliver very accurate readings. This series circuit contains a pair of 10,000 ohm resistors. When connected to a 6-volt battery, each resistor is said to drop or consume 3 volts. The circuit drops a total of 6 volts. A voltmeter connected in parallel with one of the resistors is therefore expected to read 3 volts. This particular meter reads significantly less than expected. The meter's high current flow design changes circuit resistance and causes inaccurate readings. The total resistance of this 6 volt series circuit is 20,000 ohms. Each resistor drops 3 volts. However, connecting the meter causes the circuit to behave differently the meter places a parallel load on the circuit. When connected, the meter and resistor form a parallel sub-circuit with less resistance. Now it's a series parallel circuit with only 15,000 ohms of resistance. Instead of dropping 3 volts, the resistor and meter together drop 2 volts, while the other resistor drops 4 volts. Since the analog meter only detects 2 volts in the parallel part of the circuit, the meter reading is 33% less than expected. Let's see what reading we get using a high impedance DVOM. This DVOM reading is much closer to 3 volts than the analog meter because the DVOM only uses a tiny amount of the current from the circuit. Analog meters have other shortcomings besides inaccuracy. For example, analog meters seem to give one reading when viewed straight on and another reading when viewed from an angle. And before measuring resistance with an analog meter, the needle must be adjusted to point at zero to compensate for meter battery discharge and test lead resistance. Digital multimeter J34029A is very versatile. It has six operating functions which measure AC voltage, DC voltage, AC amperage, DC amperage, dialed voltage drop, and resistance. For instance, the five sensitivity ranges in the voltage function accurately measure voltages between one thousandth of a volt and one thousand volts in alternating current or fifteen hundred volts in direct current. The six resistance ranges measure between one tenth of an ohm and twenty million ohms. The diode test function measures forward voltage drops across diodes and transistors. Diodes allow current flow in only one direction called forward. The DVOM measures how much voltage a diode or transistor consumes or drops during operation. This DVOM's digital display indicates meter polarity, overload, battery condition, and circuit continuity. Polarity refers to the positioning of the meter in a circuit. For example, connecting the positive test lead to power and grounding the negative test lead results in positive polarity. Reversing the test leads gives a negative polarity reading. An OL appears on the meter display to signal an overload if the input signal is greater than the range setting. This feature allows testing in circuits where unknown overload conditions might exist. A flashing decimal point indicates that the internal battery must be replaced. To change the DVOM battery or fuse, Turn the unit off to prevent possible meter damage. Remove the back cover and replace the battery. A 
a spare fuse attaches to the inside of the cover. In any resistance range, an ohm symbol appears to indicate when circuit continuity exists. If continuity does not exist, an OL is displayed. However, if circuit continuity is maintained, the OL disappears and the circuit resistance is shown. That pretty much takes care of what happens on the digital display and what the different symbols mean. Before making any electrical measurements, though, be sure that the meter operates properly. The know-how reference manual explains DVOM checkout procedures. Now, let's look at the different test lead connections used when making the three basic measurements, voltage, resistance, and current. The lower part of the meter face has three input terminals, a V-ohm terminal, which is circled in red, a COM terminal, circled in black, and an A terminal. For all measurements, install the negative test lead into the COM terminal. For all voltage and resistance measurements, put the positive test lead into the red circled V-ohm connector. But when measuring current, the positive lead must be installed in the terminal labeled A as in amps. To measure voltage, switch off circuit power, set the meter's range and function, connect the test leads to the circuit, and switch on the power. When measuring DC voltage, use the DCV function. This function covers most of the automotive voltage measuring situations. Since we expect about 12 volts of direct current, use the 20 DCV setting. For hands-off connection, use alligator clip adapter J34029-14 on the negative test lead. This allows the negative lead to be connected to a good ground while testing various parts with the positive lead. When making measurements, always hold the test leads by their insulator grips. If you touch the probe tip, a shock or an inaccurate reading may result. And then when the measurement is complete, turn the circuit power off and disconnect the test leads. That's the basic voltage measurement. Set the meter, turn off the circuit power, connect the test leads in parallel across the circuit being measured, turn on the power, then observe the meter reading. The voltage function can also be used to check ground connections. With the meter set to 20 dCV, connect the negative test lead to the circuit being tested. Make sure that the connections are solid. When the test leads are connected in parallel across a circuit that's operating, the DVOM displays the difference in voltage between the two points. This voltage difference is called voltage drop or voltage loss. A good ground connection will read less than half of a volt when the circuit operates. This one is just fine. Measuring resistance is similar to the way voltage is measured. The test slates are connected to the volt, ohm, and COM ports, and the measurement is made in parallel across the component. So far, measuring resistance is the same as measuring voltage. There is one important difference, though. Resistance is always measured in an unpowered circuit. It is extremely important to disconnect power before measuring resistance. Serious damage will occur to the meter if the test leads touch the powered circuit with a DVOM set to the ohms range. Isolate the circuit by disconnecting power and ground. Then, since the resistance of this component is not known, start on the highest resistance range, connect the test leads in parallel across the circuit, and reduce the setting until an acceptable reading is displayed. To test a diode with a DVOM, make sure that the diode is disconnected from its power source. Then, set the DVOM to the diode test function. Connect the test leads to the diode. If the DVOM reads OL, reversing test lead connections should produce a reading since diodes only carry current in one direction. The reading indicates how much voltage the diode consumes or the diode's forward voltage drop when carrying current. However, if OL is displayed with both test lead connections, the diode is faulty. Current, also called amperage, is measured in a totally different way. The circuit must be open to allow for test lead connections. This DVOM won't handle more than two amps of current. When more than two amps of current are expected, use high current shunt J34029-14 
34,898 to extend the meter's operating range. Then, with the positive test lead in the input connector labeled A and the negative lead in the COM connector, the meter is connected in series. It's really important that the meter leads never touch the circuit in parallel. If the leads are accidentally connected across a circuit when the meter is set to an amp range, the leads will act like jumper wires. This can cause serious damage to the DVOM or the car's electronic components. With the circuit power off, open the circuit. Then, securely connect the meter leads in series with the circuit being tested. With the meter set to the proper current range, turn on the power. The meter measures current flow. Remember that the meter can only measure a maximum of 2 amps. If more than 2 amps is expected, use the high current shunt. With the shunt connected in series with the load and the meter set to the 200 millivolt DC scale, current up to 99 amps can be measured. Diagnosing electrical problems involves more logical thinking than anything else. The troubleshooter must think through the problem before making the measurements. Electrical measurements are made for two reasons. First, to confirm or deny suspicions about possible problems. And second, to logically eliminate the possibilities one by one until the cause is revealed. Notice that both the reasons for making measurements rely on logic. The basic strategy behind electrical diagnosis is the same, no matter how complicated the harness is or how many computers are on board. Diagnostic logic always consists of the same four basic steps. First, check the problem by operating the circuit to confirm the complaint. Then, study the schematic until circuit operation is understood. Third, find and repair the cause of the problem. Last, test the repair to make sure the complaint is resolved. That's it in a nutshell. Several tests can be used to isolate a problem. For example, troubleshooting a battery discharge problem involves current measurement. Remember, for current measurement, use the A input connector and connect the meter in series. The meter is connected in series at any point in the circuit that can be opened. The most common places for current measurement include the battery, fusible links, and fuses. Normal current draw is between 25 and 50 milliamps but this figure will vary from car to car. This is the current used by the vehicle clock, ECM keep alive memory, SIR system, and other accessories that are always powered. The constant current drain is commonly called parasitic loss. To trace an excessive current drain, begin by turning off the ignition switch, lamps, and all accessories. Close the doors, deck lid, and glove box to keep the dome and courtesy lamps off. If the engine compartment light is on when the hood's open, remove the bulb. Then disconnect the battery cable. Next, connect the test leads in series between the battery cable and battery terminal. At this time, the current flow reading should appear on the meter. If the reading is greater than 50 milliamps, try to identify the circuit carrying the current. To do this, watch the meter display while pulling out fuses. When the meter reading drops after removing a fuse, the current drain is in that circuit. Sometimes, though, pulling the fuses alone will not locate the current drain. In such cases, the meter must be connected in series between the screw terminal and every fusible link's ring tongue. When the source of excess current flow is detected, make the necessary repairs. And don't forget to test the repairs after making them. It's the best way to reduce comebacks. Now, let's take a look at how to trace a short to ground using the DCV function of the multimeter. This procedure involves voltage measurement. The test leads are connected in series in the circuit to be tested, so it's very important to disconnect the circuit load to make this test. Remove the fuse, then connect the test leads across the fuse terminals. Beginning near the fuse box, Reach down and wiggle the wiring harness from side to side. When the meter reading changes, the short is near the area being wiggled. Repair that part of the circuit and test the repair. However, this process can be a little more involved when the circuit being tested powers several loads. Then the problem branch of the circuit must be isolated. 
Start by referring to the fuse block details. Find the schematic for the circuit being traced. Identify the fuses, switches, and connectors leading to each load. Then, open the circuits either by opening the connectors or removing the loads. If the meter still detects voltage with all loads disconnected, the short is likely to be in the wiring between the fuse and the loads. However, if the meter does not detect voltage, remove the test leads from the fuse cavity, then install the fuse. If the fuse blows immediately, the short is in the wiring leading to the first connector or switch. However, if the fuse does not blow, close the switches and connect the circuit loads one at a time. Check the fuse after connecting each load. When the fuse blows, it means that the short to ground is in the circuit just connected. After making a repair, always test the repair to make sure that the circuit is in good working order before you button everything up. A short to ground can also be located using the DVOM's resistance range. The main difference between using the DCV and the resistance range is that testing is done in an unpowered circuit. When testing with the resistance range, it's best to disconnect the vehicle battery to prevent meter damage. After making sure that voltage is not present at the fuse cavity, connect one test lead to a good ground. Connect the other lead to the load side of the fuse terminal. As before, wiggle the harness from side to side while observing the meter display. When a reading registers, the short is in the area being wiggled. Now let's diagnose an open or high resistance circuit. We can use a typical headlamp schematic to demonstrate diagnosis. An open in the headlamp circuit could begin with the complaint that the high beams don't operate. Begin the diagnosis with a systems check. Turn on the headlamps. Make sure that they both operate on high and low beam. This test confirms that the high beams do not operate. Next, study the headlamp circuit wiring schematic. Power is present at the light switch at all times. When the light switch is turned on, power is provided to the dimmer switch. With the dimmer switch in the low position and the low beam circuit complete to ground, the low beams illuminate. With the dimmer switch in the high position and the high beam circuit complete to ground, the high beams illuminate. Now that's how the circuit should work, but the high beams on our vehicle don't work even though the high beam indicator is on. Let's take another look at the schematic and see if we can figure out what's happening in the circuit. The high beam indicator is on, so the circuit is known to be good as far as the dimmer switch side of connector 100. The headlamp grounds are known to be good because the low beams work. It's not likely that both high beam filaments are burned out. It's equally unlikely that both headlight connectors are bad. Therefore, the most likely cause of our headlamp complaint is either a bad connection at C100 or a break in the wire between C100 and the right headlight. By thinking along these lines, the list of possible causes has quickly been narrowed down to a specific area. The best part of this diagnosis is the vehicle hasn't even been worked on yet. What's been demonstrated is just simply doing your homework. All that remains to be done is to measure voltage using the multimeter. Check for voltage at the connector and wire leading to the right headlight. Repairing the bad connection should remedy the problem. We have been working with a high quality DVOM and the basic four-step electrical diagnosis procedure. Check the problem, study the schematic drawings, find and repair the problem, and test the repair. Remember that no matter how complicated the system is, troubleshooting consists of these four steps. That's it for now. In the next program in this continuing series on dealing with electricity in an automobile, we'll look at basic computer operation.